Hey, uh, Mary normally does the announcement setup, so I don't even know if she did anything. Do you have anything back there? Or did she already pass that off to you? Somebody? No, but I can do it. Okay. Right. Is there something on there? I'll be honest with you, I worked all day and yesterday I was like, I got home, I think at 8 or something, I was like, and I said, I don't even know, and I woke up at 3 and that's things. But it was all right. Yes. So I didn't know what she did or what she had ready. Perky, okay. like Lindsay. All right. No, no, we got her, we got her set free this morning. That's right. We got her set free this morning. She can be. She can be anointed. No, you are who you no, are. No, you are. Who yes. You are. And right. you're anointed. Whatever. <laughs> I'm just teasing. You. <laughs> Use your dry sarcasm. Hey, hey, wait a minute. Before she does that, let's give her a hand for opening up her home. That's a big step. Yeah. 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 Really good, by the way, too. Yes. Kids in Christ Academy. You said it like a question mark. Train yeah. and act with courage. <laughs> I suppose that's what the boys are like that right now. Burn praise Wednesday. You gonna be here, Teresa? Is that this Wednesday? Awesome. Gonna, we're, gonna, we're doing it this Wednesday. Right? We had a great time last Wednesday. It was. Yes. Marvelous. And I anticipate another marvelous. Yes. Yeah. Mm. That's it. I do have one announcement that you, of course, wouldn't know about. But um, we're coming up on the first, or I should say, the Sunday before Christmas. Christmas. Right? Does anybody have their calendar out to tell me is it actually is coming? Yes. Because Christmas falls in the middle, so it's like, it's half. We got one more Sunday. Yeah. Before Christmas. All right, let's see if we can put out some cards uh, just to have them so you can give out folks. But you know the invitation, right? It's you. Yes, You're the invitation. You can hand out cards to the blue, you know, the, the blue moon comes, but the idea is you're the invitation. Amen? So what I'd like for us to do is, uh, is say a special prayer, and thank you, Kat, for helping us out with that. Amen. I'd like for us to say a special prayer, because... Uh, the gentleman from the other church and I were talking, we were trying to think about what kind of things we would do as a church to reach out to our community and everything. And it just, it, you know, there's lots of good things to do, but I just didn't really feel excited about any of them. What I did feel excited about, strangely enough, is that each one of us take, make it our personal mission to invite uh, somebody this coming, either the Christmas, the Sunday before Christmas or the Sunday after Christmas and to encourage you with these words. The folks around you are the best thing about the church. You know, it's, it's not just the building or the place or myself or anything, it's, it's, it's you people. And if you believe in the people around you, that you believe their sincerity, if you believe that they are good for other people, that knowing them has helped yours and can help other people's lives, I encourage you to keep that in mind because you're not just inviting person to come, a person to come to a church service. You're inviting them into a group of fel a fellowship of believers. Believers that you should know by now well enough to know whether or not you want other people to know them. And so I would encourage you. I know that I'm, I'm better because of a lot of the people in here. I always enjoy being with everyone. But I mean, some of the people in here have really imparted into my life and helped me, encouraged me. And in times, they've been examples to me. Amen. So I would encourage you to think about this fellowship in that light. And think about who do you know that you think would enjoy the same kind of people, the fellowship, the encouragement that you receive here at Life Church through the people here. And then say next week, God, give me an opportunity through that these next two to three weeks. I say two to three because, <coughs> as I said, one before, one after, Christmas kind of falls in the middle of it. So whether it's before or after. Yeah. Is that a question? Or? Christmas Eve is on Wednesday. Right. Are we having a service? No. <laughs> that was not the plan, at least. That's what I heard. The one that we're inviting them to is for next Sunday. This Sunday. Do we have any decor or anything? Any decor? Decor. 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 Decor.
You know, that's a great question, you know, because the funny thing is, is I was like, last Sunday, Mary says, hey, can we put up the Christmas decorations? I said, I'm going to do it. And then I said, Friday. I said, no. I said, we'll do it. We'll do it Friday. So Friday came and we got busy. And I said, I, said, I can't do it Friday. So the simple answer is, they're sitting in there. They're here. Right now. Okay. Waiting. So if anybody wants to get together after church, put them up. No, no, no. Excellent. All right. It's just, I was just kidding. And we have freedom to do what we like, right? Now. Absolutely. All right. I mean, don't make it look like a haunted, show, haunted house or anything. You know what I mean. It'll look good. Yeah. Let her be herself. You trust me? Really? I'll tell you I'll tell you, I'll tell you what. I know that between the body, the arms, the legs, and everybody will work it out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's right. You guys did a good job. There's lights in there, um, and there's uh, there's just general decorations with a lot of nativity stuff and all kinds of things. So yeah, and poinsettias, which we should have put out. But again, you know, only one guy can only do so much. So anyway, it's all back there. Yes, whoever wants to help, many hands make work light. It's not in the Bible, but it does work. Thank you for bringing that up. And so, yes, let's pray right now, because I believe that you're the best hope of inviting somebody other than, you know, above putting out just a card or a few signs. And I'm going to put out some signs, but you know what? The best invitation is you. Can I just share a quick mm -hmm. testimony? Um, we have our neighbors next door, and we know we bring their little girls sometimes with us. Yeah. And um, they're very, um, the wife is very reserved, so I really... I've never felt comfortable like just saying, hey, you want to come to church? Hey, you want to come to church? But I invited them to the play and say things like that, you know. Right. And uh, the other day, we were both outside with, um, I was with her husband and her, and we were talking about our homeowners association who keeps just like, I mean, it's like borderline harassment, so we have a lot to complain about. And um, so we're just sitting there joking around, and I was like, you know what, though? I was like, because her husband has said to me before, I'm so grateful to live in this neighborhood. No matter how much they bug us, no matter how nitpicky they are, I'm so grateful to live in this neighborhood. And I said, Bart, I'm taking a page out of your book. And I'm saying, I'm so grateful to live in this neighborhood. I don't care if they don't like my little children at play sign. Whatever it is, I'll get rid of it. And um, he said, you know what? He goes, we are so grateful that you guys are right next door to us. Amen. And he goes, and I told my wife the other day, we have got to go to their church. Great. Whatever they've got, we want some of it. Ah. I, thought, I thought, oh my gosh, you know, God is so cool. Because here I was chicken, you know, to ask anything. And now he's opened the door, you know, to kind of allow it to happen, so. Well, well, Teresa, let's make sure we got some Christmas stuff on the Could docket for those two weeks. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the traditional <coughs> worship <coughs> and, and okay. whatever else you feel led to do. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. But, uh, like, uh, what's that? <coughs> Except Grandma got run over by a ringer. Probably not that one. <laughs> although, <laughs> although after church, we may get together and say, in honor of Sam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she was, just because she was your grandmother? Yeah. Disrespectful. My grandfather used to play that very loud. Oh, that's a funny song. <laughs> well, no, I think for us, but she never said anything. She just let him play it. Well, listen, it's kind of mean, though. I would like to ask for a prayer because I was just sitting here. God just reminded me of you. For me, I'm grateful, you know, because he's forgiven so much, and he's done so much in my life, so I'm so grateful, and I appreciate what you, the Lord had to share, because it's very difficult to go back into the environment that I'm in, and be, and I've been hiding, you know, who, who God is, and who God's creating inside of me, and it's growing, but around me, I'm like this because I'm afraid to grow. I'm afraid to show who I really am because God is not where I'm placed there, but he's not in the people that I'm around. But as I'm sitting here, I'm going, you're asking to invite people. Wow, I'm sitting in the middle of a whole unbelievable I invite, 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 invite. People are there, I'm in, I'm in the middle of the campground with the moose lodge. Yeah, don't know where it comes from. I mean, so y'all.
now pray that God would give me the courage to be who I really am. And to have the courage to invite, but that the Holy Spirit would guide and Renee wouldn't guide. Amen. And that lives would be touched and blessed by him, for him, through me, and nothing of me at all. And that pride would never set foot inside of me. Not once. Thank you, Lord. Well, you know, I, I can agree with that. And the wonderful thing is I see in scriptures that Jesus said, you know, no man comes unto me except the Father drawn. You know what that means? It means that even Jesus himself couldn't force somebody to follow through. Oh, that's, that, good. that's pretty awesome because that means, yes. hey, I'm just putting it out there. I can't do it, you know, I can't confirm in their heart that this is what they need to do and I can't I can't cause them to actually follow through. Them. You know, it's gotta be God. And even that comes from the, the lips of Jesus. So we're so afraid just to put the invitation out there like we don't want to force the issue. Let me just share with you this. You're not gonna make anybody do you know? anything they don't wanna do. So I got saved because through a random group of circumstances that I believe that God ordained. But through a random group of circumstances, I ended up in a church where I didn't even respond to the message per se, but somebody did lay hands on me, and from that point on, I was never the same. And uh, so what I'm, what I'm telling you is we sometimes have a lot less to do with what God's doing than we think. It's just, you know, we're, we're, we're oblivious sometimes to the supernatural taking place in our midst. We like to think it comes associated with feelings and that I'm aware of the yes. conditions under which God's with me. And i got to share with you, I came back a year later to tell that guy what a marvelous thing had happened in my life, how I got saved, taken up into heaven, called into ministry, and he was like, oh, that's great. He didn't have a clue. I can tell you some of the greatest and most marvelous things that God will do is just when you step out in faith, you may not have any associated feelings any kind of confirmation, no, Amen. no warm, fuzzy feelings, no, you know, nothing, no shocks or anything. Sometimes God's just doing something. Yes. And all it takes is that mm. little part that we play. Just a little part. It's yeah. just I need the courage. I need the courage to even open my mouth to invite somebody to church. That you can do. I mean, that's what I'm asking for: is the courage. Well, we're gonna pray all. Together. Even open my mouth to invite these people around me, God. You know. And, to, and the, the, most of the reason that I think we don't open our mouths is because we do feel like there's some responsibility that we've got to make the timing right, we've got to make sure that it's sincere, we've got to make sure that we, we put it in the right attitude, that we've had our walk in line with our invitation, and all this stuff, when really it's God that's going to do the thing on the inside of the heart of the person that's hearing, even if we act like peanut. You know, God's gonna, God's got it. You know, that makes me feel better. Can I, can I tell you this? Do you know why I was at church? You know why I was at church? I was at church because my uncle uh, told me I needed to take my mother, who was having uh, manic episodes, to a church. I wasn't there for any spiritual reason whatsoever. I wasn't there because I thought I should be there. I wasn't even there for me. I was there for her. I took her to church because she needed church because she was psycho. <laughs> I mean, certified psycho in the hospital. Mm -hmm. So I took her there. And I was the one that got born again and said, call the ministry. Praise the Lord. She went away the same way she came. <laughs> so please, <clears throat> understand where I'm coming from. I've seen God do marvelous things when you least expect. Amen. So it's just a matter of step down. Yeah. You, need to know you don't have to hear from heaven and invite somebody to church. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to say that again because it's inspired. You don't have to hear from heaven to invite somebody to church. <laughs> Amen. 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 All right. So, and uh, you know, I'll pray that God put lots of people in your path to do that yes. and realize that it's not on you. You know, it's not because you had this great. I'm glad you're, you have a good testimony in your but Amen. It, yeah. it shouldn't negate the fact that we can still invite people into the presence of God. It was the first message I went out with preaching on the streets. I said, come to church and God will be your father. I mean, that's all I knew. So, come, come to church was what I did, and came to church and got saved, and my life changed is what happened, so I figured if everybody did the same thing, it all happened for them too. 
But anyway, let's believe God. Thank you, Lord. Father, it's just our mouth and our mind that need to come yes. in alignment with what you've already said you want us yes. to do, which is bring people into fellowship. The, the word discipleship is to bring people into that place where they too are a, a learner of Jesus. And so you can't be a learner of Jesus if you're not around people that are learning from Jesus. Yes. So right now we're all learning about Jesus and we're even yes. learning more about what he's got for us from Ephesians this morning. But on, on, on those Sundays around Christmas, we'll be doing things just a little different to help people feel like they are like we're focused in on what they're experiencing in life and things that are going on in their lives. But right now, Father, I just I just believe that you've got a special anointing for us to be able to step out and just invite because we are the invitation. So I thank you, Father God, just like you sent Jesus to be the invitation to yourself. We're being sent out by you to be the invitation to Jesus. And we believe and receive that today in Jesus' name. Yes. And we receive that and say, amen. 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 All right. Awesome. All right. Can I say one more thing? Absolutely. All right. I was listening to this thing, and it just, it so honed in, like, you know, our small little church here. You know, and sometimes, you know, I mean, we can get tricked in our mind, like, oh, you know, like when they feel like so, like the beam is right on them, you know, because sometimes sure. taking them into a bigger church is a lot more relaxing because they're just one of the masses. And, you know, something I heard really just stuck with me. And it is that, you know, what people are looking for is, is real. What people are looking for is the presence of God. Yeah. You know, and they might not know that that's what they're looking for, exactly. but that's what yes. they're looking for is the presence of God. And, and, you know, it talks about when Jesus left, like all those people who were just hounding him for this religious experience, you know, because that's what they were looking for. They were looking for a religious experience. And he went to go be with, you know, um, Martha, Mary, and, and Lazarus, because those three people wanted to be with him. They wanted to serve him. They wanted to sit at his feet and listen. You know, he wanted to be with those people because they really genuinely wanted to be with yeah. him. And, you know, when I thought about that, I just thought about our little church and how, how, how we all just pour our hearts out here. And it's so true and so genuine and so relationship-based. And, and yeah. so such a time to be in the genuine presence of God. Amen. And I just thought, wow, that that right there is the creme de la creme. Because everything else sometimes can get lost in all of it. And it just becomes a religious experience. Yeah. You know? So anyways, I feel like we have something so special to offer. Yeah, we impact one another. Yes. Make a fact, yeah. It's almost like this it's almost this morning I felt like it's almost um, everything just blends. It likes everybody here. It's like it, it, they are meant to be here. It is like a working thing. It's like it, everybody complements each other. And it's emotion and it's a flowing, you know, and it, it was, it's really cool. It's really yeah. neat. Yeah. Well, there's it's always room for more. Yes, <laughs> and I was just thinking, there's more to come. There's yeah. always room for more. To to that. That. That's the most wonderful yes. thing about the body of Christ. It never gets full. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's pretty awesome. Well, we're going to zip through a little bit of this. We won't, uh, we won't uh, let's spend too long because we don't want you to get worn out here. But let's go to Ephesians 2. And uh, last week we left on some exciting note about, uh, about the body of Christ, the church, having been given the uh, authority in the earth. We're going we're gonna to follow that through as... as uh, Paul didn't have a chapter two, he just kept talking, you know, so we're going to keep following those thoughts through and uh, start out in verse one of uh, Ephesians two. It says, uh, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, I will admit to you that I did not start out with the idea of getting into this as much as I did. Praise the Lord. But... There are some interesting things here. All right, first of all, uh, trespasses. Now, uh, again, mine's not the final word on anything. I'm not the yay man. But um, I did do a little study. I just thought it was interesting. So I'll share with you some of the things that I saw. Um, here it says in verse 1 that we were uh, dead in trespasses and sin. You know, you wonder, what's the difference between the two? I thought it was interesting. And... Uh, 
Sin in the, in the Greek actually means to, to miss the mark. That would be the best, simplest approach to that. Uh, transgression, on the other hand, is to slip up. Um, something that you didn't intentionally mean to do wrong, but it's an unintentional consequence of being a sinner. See, when you, when you are a sinner, you transgress. In other words, you do things that are wrong, even though you don't really know they're wrong yet, because you're a sinner. I think that's interesting. Because transgression is like uh, if you're walking down the street, you slip and fall, and you oh my gosh, I fell into that. Less transgression. Sin, on the other hand, is a choice. Sin's a decision. Nobody sins by accident. You mean you choose. And it's her choice. Yes. So sin and transgression, <clears throat> one follows the other. Part. You transgress because you're a sinner. But uh, let's look at verse 3. Uh, I'm sorry, verse 2. He says, in which you once walked according to the course of the world. Yeah. Anybody ever been putt putt golfing? Yep. Yes. Yeah. You know you go through the course, right? Yes. And probably in the real call, the real golf, you go through the course too. But that's a long course. Yeah. I like to go through putt putt course because it's like really short and every one of them is fun. <laughs> Whereas the other thing is just frustrating. Yeah. At least for me. Anyway. <coughs> I thought that this was interesting. Everyone, uh, everyone has this course that the world has for them. Everybody is on that agenda, that course yes. that the enemy sets for them. Let's look at that real quick. It says, verse 2, You once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in sons of disobedience. That is a mouthful. And I kind of want to address some of those things. In fact, I'm going to spend a good bit of time on it because um, I just want you to understand some things. Is, I, there's no sense in reading through it and not really getting out of it what's there. Amen. So we're going, to, we're going to look at some of these things. First of all, what is sin like we talked about? Well, sin is a conscious choice, but the Bible says, to him that knows to do good and doeth it not, to him it's sin. In other words, it, it's when... Even when you know something and you choose not to do it, it's a choice. And you, you choose not to do what you know you should do. Now, when it comes to verse 2, we <coughs> talk about the prince of the power of the air. Prince of the power of the air. I thought it was interesting, the word prince. Um, I looked it up and I thought, I thought it, it was interesting because it said it was the, a ruler of a jurisdiction. A ruler of a jurisdiction. In other words, a, a, a prince had a designated area in yes. which they ruled. Yes. And I like that because it's not any accident that that's given to us. The devil doesn't have some omnipotence. He doesn't have some omnipresence. Amen. He's got a very limited scope yeah, limited space, you know. in which he operates. <coughs> now, I want to share with you some of that limited scope. Um, you can write some of these down. Um, I would encourage you to do that on a piece of paper. If you don't have a piece of paper, now's your chance to see if you can borrow one. But, um, or write in your Bible, it's, it's okay. Job, the first chapter and the sixth and seventh verses, gives us, and, and consider this, Job is, uh, to my understanding, the earliest book of the Bible. Um, it was contemporary with, uh, his lifetime itself was contemporary with Abraham, one of the, uh, the Supposed writers may have been Moses. It wasn't Job, just so you know. You know, and uh, we have uh, indications that it's one of the oldest books of the Bible. Interestingly enough, in one of those oldest books of the Bible, namely the first chapter, six and seven verses, gives to you an actual domain or a a a, a limited uh, scope in which the devil operates. Can anybody remember kind of what it is? He you remember uh, that. Uh, it came and there came a day that the, uh, the sons of God presented themselves, and the, the angelic hosts presented themselves before God, and uh, God said to uh, to Job, well, "Where have you come from?" And Job Let's said, see. "I've gone to and fro in the earth and up and down in it, yes. to and fro and up and down. In other words, back and forth, around on the earth and inside, up and down in it." Yes. I thought that was interesting. There's a scope in which he operates. Now he's allowed to uh, to enter, to be called upon, 
but obviously his influence is not, is negated. There's never there's no satanic influence beyond this scope that he has. Now, the prince of the power of the air. We've talked about the air before. Basically, everybody who's a little bit of a science uh, or taken just about any science knows that there's a you know there's this, there's an atmosphere around the earth. We can consider that the atmosphere in which the devil reigns. Now. Prince is also interesting because uh, not only does it mean that there's a limited scope, but you don't have usually a prince unless you've had a king. Yes. Which is interesting. It leads you to believe that, that, that princes don't get their power unless somebody else has had it yes. first. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So it almost it almost indicates there was a hand-me-down. You have to say, well, gee, did God give the devil authority in the earth? No. No, it's worse than that. <laughs> it's not God at all. He never did that. What we want to look at is, uh, let's, let's continue reading here. In, uh, and uh, maybe we can fill in the blanks from some of what we see here. It says in verse 2, The prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience. Sons of disobedience. Mm. So, what do you think that is? Well, I don't know. Let's talk about that for a minute. Adam and Eve were the original people with dominion on the earth. God's never really been concerned about the earth as much as he has dominion. He yes. always was concerned and given dominion. Yes. That's what the where the power is. is in dominion, isn't it? Amen. So Adam and Eve were given dominion by God over everything within the present earthly sphere. Remember? Yeah. All this is yours. Yeah. Exercise dominion over it is in the actual Hebrew. You are to keep it or exercise dominion over it. This was your domain. Right? Right. Now, if Adam and Eve were given that by God, and Satan, and Satan is called prince, not king, but the prince of this, of the air, or of this earthly atmosphere. We would have to assume that because we are called, he's called the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. That would be people that were, who was the ultimate, who was the first disobedient person? Adam and Eve, right? Adam in particular, first disobedient person. Now we talked about sin. Sin is a choice. Sin is when you know what you're supposed to do and don't do it. And in this case, the first person that knew what they were supposed to be doing but didn't do it would have been Adam. Yeah. Right? Now, think about it. We look at disobedience now. We look at sin now. We look at transgression now. The oops, I fell into sin, doesn't really happen to us, you know, as, as born-again believers. Yeah. Um, we're you know, we, we're, we're cognizant what sin is now. And we be sinning by choosing to sin. But what's interesting is that this was a this was a, a earth and a world that didn't have any transgression, no awareness of sin or its what it was. The effects of disobedience, the effect, none of that existed as far as they were the first people to encounter that option. Yeah. We look back at it now and say, well, that was dumb. I would never do that. Yeah, right. But the reality is, is that you know, they, they couldn't fathom the degree of what was going to happen when they disobeyed. And disobedience uh, was only part of the problem because the Bible says that who you yield your members to, to them you become their servants. So, not only did they disobey God, but they then yielded themselves to the enemy. Yes. Now his agenda had already been set. He's had this experience before. He's been cast out of heaven. And in fact, was <coughs> cast down to the earth. My belief is to constantly be supervised, held in check by Adam and Eve. Created in the image of God and in his likeness. 
so that you would forever be able to keep him in check, that he would never be able to do what he did again. And a constant reminder was Adam and Eve were created in the image of God and in his likeness, which meant the, his mannerisms, the way that he is. Amen. Kind of sounds like fun to be a tormentor of the tormentor. Amen. Amen. Right? It's just a little, yeah, little something, some different way of looking at it. But the idea here is that God created Adam and Eve. The devil was already cast out of heaven. Yes. Satan was already cast out and was inhabiting the earth, yes. but did not have dominion. Dominion Amen. was stripped from him. Yes. Now that dominion over the earth Amen. was given to Adam and Eve. Amen. Now, through deceitfulness, but yet they chose disobedience yes. and sin. Yes. It's still legal. Yes. The transgression, the, the, I shouldn't say the transgression, the transfer is still legal. Yes. Because the devil didn't do anything wrong, Adam and Eve did. Yes, amen. So the transfer of dominion took place Okay. Not at the will of God, Amen. Come on. but at the uh, sinning of Adam and Eve. Amen. That's where it happened. Yeah. They chose to disobey God. Yes. And when they disobeyed, they become subservient to the one they obey. To the enemy. Amen. Instead of God who they were obeying, yep. they now obeyed the devil. <clears throat> yes. And translated that dominion that was given to them to him. Amen. That's why I believe he's called the prince and that it wasn't originally his. It was a uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I got it in my notes here. It's when it's when um, something is delivered to somebody else. Let me see if I put it pick it up here real quick. Conferred. This dominion is conferred on him, not by God, but it was given from God. I, I, I know I'm, I'm reiterating it, but I, I just hope you understand where we're coming from. Amen. Here, is that Amen. This was something that man did. It was a whole man mistake. Amen. You know, the whole the whole worldly system and everything that you see in existence today. Yeah, it was birthed out of out of the devil. As a matter of fact, he's called the god of this world. You may wonder why, because. Uh, when we talk about God, we're talking about the creative entity. When you talk about the God of this world, he's the creative entity yes. of the world in which you live. Now, thankfully, Jesus said that they're in the world, but not of not it. The world. Yes. So you can be in the creative entity called the world that the devil made. But that doesn't mean you're of it. By choice, you're right? not. Because we've chosen, listen to this, chosen to become obedient to the faith. Amen. Very Amen. Good. The Bible actually talks about becoming obedient to the gospel. I'll give you that in 2 Thessalonians 1 8. Amen. So there's a whole lot of obedience and a whole lot of disobedience. Disobedience, it says in Romans, I think it's 5. Yeah, Romans 5 19, it says, through one man's disobedience. All were made sinners. Yes. Okay? Remember that word that we started off with here in Ephesians where it says, the spirit that now works in the children of disobedience. Yes. We were the offspring of the first disobedient man. Amen. Yes. So we were children of disobedience. Children of wrath is what it later on says. Um, because of sin. Remember we talked about what you know, God's wrath. Amen. It's the natural reaction of His holiness meeting, encountering sin. But it's, it's not God just being all angry and bent out of shape. As a matter of fact, the worst thing that could have happened to man happened on the, at the fall in the Garden of Eden. You didn't yes. see God stomp around, make the earth shake, split it in half, and get upset about it. You know? Because, number one, it was, there was a plan that preceded all yes. that took place. But aside from that, God doesn't run around like an angry little person who, you know, an angry little kid that doesn't get their way. Amen. You know, his wrath is not 
It's not like that. It's a, it's a, a, a natural, inherent reaction to sin that he's oftentimes had to separate man from. In fact, that's the whole idea behind the, the, uh, the veil of the temple and all this stuff. So that, you know, Jesus became that veil that could finally open us up to the Holy of Holies because his own flesh had become the, the, uh, the thing that took upon it all of God's wrath. Anyway. Amen. <clears throat> so here, in, we haven't gotten to verse 2, have we? Yes. Verse 2 and 3, let's verse 3. Among whom also you once conducted yourselves in the lust of your flesh, fulfilling the desires of your flesh and of your mind, and by nature, by nature the children of wrath, even as others. Children of wrath. In the natural, because of sin, the sin that Adam chose, we all became the children of disobedience. Amen. And or the sons of disobedience, what it says in mine at least. I don't know what yours says. Amen. Mine says the sons of disobedience. Then it says the children of wrath. Amen. That sounds poopy. I mean, that's just that's just bad. But that's that's the way it was. And there's no there's really just no mincing words about that. We were on the outs because of sin. Yes. Sin was a choice. But now we can choose. Yes, amen. <laughs> Life. And the yes. wonderful thing is, is he starts to explain it. Let's look at it real quick. He says, but God. Everybody say, but God. But God. God. Don't you like that? Yes. A anybody ever try to like, when somebody says, uh, well, I I've been pulled over. Anybody ever been pulled over in here? Sam, yes. tell me you've been pulled over. Mm -hmm. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Voice. Made me feel all right. Love you, man. When I was young. Okay. Yeah, I... I, I've been pulled over and, and uh, almost almost indefinitely, in, almost without exception, I get I get something like, "Do you know how fast you were going?" No. No. If I'd been watching the speed limit that well, I probably wouldn't have been going fast. But uh, the idea here is that you know the guy asks a, a couple of questions like that, and uh, and then I try to give some sort of response. But it never is enough. No matter how many buts I give. But I was just following that person. But I was on my way somewhere and I wasn't paying attention. But I never saw the sign. None of those buts have ever worked for me. Usually but means, okay, forget everything I said before. This is what I really wanted to tell you. I don't want us to forget everything that he said before. But he wants you to understand that that's not near as important as verse 3 on, which is, but God, no matter what happened with Adam, no matter what happened where we were, no matter who we were called, the children of, the, the sons of disobedience or the children of wrath, but God, so everybody say it again, but, but God, God. I mean, yes. that means even in light of everything we've said before, Listen real well to what I'm saying now. But God. He says in verse 4, But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us. We talked about this. These are, these are ongoing things that we've talked about from the beginning of Ephesians. If you remember, the motive for which God does these things, it's reiterated again. And reiterating again that it is God's love. Now, sometimes we do get a little mixed up. You know, we think, well, God, Jesus, and everything. Listen, this is straight from the Father. Okay? God, when, when we talk about God, we talk all Old Testament. We talk about New Testament God, we talk about Father. We have a whole different relationship, a whole different uh, revelation of who God is. Jesus came to reveal God as Father. Right? That's the highest revelation, the newest, most thorough revelation of who God is. I, it, it really it burdens my heart sometimes to hear people go back and they, you know, they'll go back into the Old Testament and they, you know, God is really this, God is really that. Oh, gee, let's talk about what Jesus said. He called him Father, and he told him he's your Father, and he, you know, this is this is the highest revelation. Don't go backwards, go forwards. 
Somebody tell me they understand where I'm coming from, please. Amen. Yes. All right. So calling anything but God, your calling any your father anything like God and everything like that, and calling Father, that's what He is. That's what Jesus came to give yes. you that relationship with. I know we refer to God, but remember, when you talk to Him, please don't disrespect Him. My, my kids don't call me Steve. I don't appreciate it. And Jesus call, him. call God God when you're talking to Him. Call Him Father. That's what yes. He is. Amen. Amen. Y'all look at me like I'm saying the wrong thing. Am I saying the right thing or the wrong thing? Amen. Right. 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 All on this? Yes. All right. All right. All right, verse 4, is that where we're going? Yes, because of his great love for us, wherewith he loved us. So he's rich in mercy. We talked about what true riches are. True riches are being able to be merciful. Forgiveness is a mercy, just so you know. Yeah. Forgiveness is a mercy. Something we extend to people that they don't deserve. All right. Or without deserving it, we should say. He's rich in mercy for his great love. He loved us even while we were dead in trespasses. In other words, we were we were sinners, so we were doing everything that sin through our flesh and through our mind sparked us any direction we were so inclined. <laughs> we followed it. Yes. Amen? Amen. I don't know about you, but Amen. I thought if I'm gonna be a sinner, I'll be good at it. Now that I'm trying now that I'm a saint, I would like to say that I'm 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 trying to be good at it. Amen. Yes. It's not by my efforts, but I mean I've got to do put some force and effort, yes. you know. Yes. Draw an eye to God and he'll draw an eye to you. There is some effort that's <laughs> displayed in that yes. statement, right? The truth, the truth, so you just got to put a little effort into it. You can't just say, oh, it's all up to God. If he wants me to stop sinning, I'll sin. Please. You know, in the old days, they give you chastity belts, you know, that, that would help. Today, <laughs> a lot of times, you know. But the idea is, uh, please, you do have a part to play in that. You can't, yes, amen. You know, you can't put it all on God. Yes. We're not trying accomplished already. We're learning how. Yes. So when you say you're trying, you're already doing it. I'm what I'm what I'm trying to say <laughs> is that we need to put our 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 money where our mouth is and, and a conscious you know, choice. Like Paul said, I'll show you my faith by my works. So There's got to be some yes. you know, effort on my part. Yes. All right? yes. As you see a lot of uh, a lot of times and I don't, I don't know why, but a lot of times there's some extreme argument that, you know, God's just got it all, you know. I'm not going to have to worry and bother about anything. And I understand what you're trying to say, that I can't earn my own salvation, but here's what the verse says. Can we read it together? Because it addresses that. Yes. It says here that, who is rich in mercy, in verse 5, listen to this, even while we were dead in trespasses and sin, he made us alive with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places with Christ. Okay? Just so we all understand. We, he, this was done for us before. Before, while we were dead in trespasses and sin. In other words, when I could not do for myself, this was done for me. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. When I could not do for myself, while I was dead in trespasses and sin, while I could not do my, for myself, what I could not and while I could not, yes, amen. it was done for me. Amen. But that's not all. Amen. What's beautiful is it's not all that, that yes, Jesus died for me. It says while, it, while I was yet a sinner, while I was in my trespasses and sin, He died for me. But it says... He made us alive together with Christ and, I like the word and, right? Raised us up together. Now that's something we don't, we're not familiar with. You know, we're not, we're not truly understanding. He's raised us up. And see, I talked last week about at the right hand of God the Father, what that is. It's the place of ultimate favor. Yes. The amen. place of ultimate favor yes, at the yes. side of God. Yes, Amen. That is where we sit in Christ Jesus, the place of ultimate favor, before you did anything to deserve it. So nothing you can do can enhance that position. Nothing yes. you can do can, can place you above it. Amen. It is the ultimate place of favor yes. in all of creation. Yes. 
Now, once you're already know you're already there and that you were there before you even knew you were there, then you can't really take upon yourself any credit for having achieved that or, or, or any Amen. attitude that you could. Right? Amen. But for I, I believe for the for for all of us, it puts in us an impetus to live the life that's been imparted on yes, the inside. Yes, the favor of God with us. Amen. Amen? Yes. I don't have to have like a list of things I should not do today. I know that the life of God that has been imparted on the inside yes, of me hallelujah. isn't spent trying to not sin. You, it's spent to, the Bible says, uh, to live unto righteousness. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, I spend more time <laughs> trying to live and follow the Spirit of God Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. than I do trying not to sin. <clears throat> and that's where the difference is. Yes. You know, I do have to try to follow God. I have to tune out my my <clears throat> my uh, fleshly, you know, stuff. I got to tune out some of the, some of my is Amen. Amen. You know, I, I I admit, I don't think anybody just wakes up every morning and has this has this uh, ultimate connection with God, you know? We all have to tune out some of the garbage. Yes. We have to choose to tune in. It's like a radio dial. You know? Amen. There, the signal's always on, but yeah. you're only getting it if you don't tune in. You've right. got to tune in. Amen. So, amen? Amen. Cool. All right, you put that on Facebook, too. Just tune in today. All right. All right, he raised this up. I like the and. The first and is, is because people really do forget. Verse 5, they stop at verse 5. Even while we were dead in trespasses and sin, uh, he made us alive together with Christ. He made us alive together with Christ. That, that's, that's still an uh, earthly perspective. But then he raised us up and says, and, so it's yes. even better, Yes. and he seated us with Christ made us sit together in heavenly places with him. Let's see. I got that right, right? Yes. Raised us together and made us sit together with him in heavenly places. And look at verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ. Amen. <laughs> I want you to tell you something. The riches of his grace will be the measure by which everything in eternity is judged. The riches of His grace will be the measure by which everything in eternity is judged. Amen. And as we say, well, you you did this or you did that, then no, no, you can't really say that's much of anything because you got to put it in perspective. The perspective yes. is the riches of His grace. That's the measurable, always, forever standard by which all other acts of grace or kindness or mercy are are now judged. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Has it really been that long? Amen. Okay. Well, if it seems like it, I'm probably not doing a great job. Then. All right. I have verses eight through fourteen, but Kat says we're at fifty minutes, so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call it a day on that. She went back there just to tell me I've been up here. Have I been up there? Amen. Amen. Good word. What she said. All right. Let's all forgive her. She's not telling the truth. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. But anyway, listen. We've had a good view. Uh, Good few verses together, uh -huh. yes. haven't we? Yes. And uh, and some good things to chew on today. I think I think we'll be uh, we'll be. Re